Hello, this is Andrew Perkins, and in this video I'd like to give an update to my Cake PHP blog tutorial videos. Those videos were done using an earlier version of Cake PHP 1.3.1, and now that Cake is at a release of 2.0, uh, some of the changes have broke my videos. The majority of the content in my videos does still work, um, but there are a few changes in Cake 2 that are now not compatible with my videos. So I'm going to talk about those changes and the errors that you might run into, as well as a few of the new things you can use in Cake inside of the uh, blog application. So here I'm at cakephp.org. You can see the newest release is 2.0.2 stable. Uh, I've already downloaded, installed, and configured this. Installation is the same, so if you need help with installation, you can watch my installation video. Here is my application. Uh, I've named it Learn Cake 2, and it is Cake 2.0.2. You can see it's all configured and ready to go. Uh, something to note is that Cake 2 now requires PHP 5.2.6 or higher, but you actually might want to go with something higher because if you look on the Cake website, Documentation, uh, the 2.0 book, click on Getting Started, click on Installation, you'll see here that they recommend 5.2.9 or greater on the site. So you might want to do that. Uh, in my case, I'm using, if we check my PHP version here, you can see I'm using 5.3.5. So I am connected to a database. We'll take a look at my database real quick. Uh, here's my Learn Cake 2 database. I'm inside of PHP My Admin, and I have a users table uh, that has an ID field, name, username, and email fields to hold some basic user information. Remember, your ID field needs to auto-increment and be a primary key. The name, username, and email fields are just standard varchar fields. So let's take a look at the folder structure for the Cake2 application, or the framework. Uh, so here it is in my text editor. The first thing you'll notice is that many of the folders now begin with a capital letter, uh, whereas in Cake 1.3, they were all lowercase. Uh, this capitalization has caused uh, some problems, so I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Um, but before we get into that, I want to mention that I have a few files here. I have a user's controller, I have a user model, I have an app controller, and I have some user view files for the controller. All of these files, the controller, the model, the views, and the app controller, came from a CakePHP 1.3 application and I've stuck them into this Cake 2.0 application. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to modify it to make it more compliant with Cake 2.0. So the code that's used in these files is very similar to the code that I used in my 1.3 uh, Cake PHP blog tutorial videos. So I'm going to cover some of the errors and problems that you might run into. So let's try and access our users controllers index page in the browser and see what happens. We go to slash users and here's an error. It says missing view. Uh, it's not able to find our view files for the index page or any of the other ones. So if we try to view user1 you can see it says no view found for view. Uh, the reason for this has to do with the capitalization that I was talking about. Uh, in my videos in 1.3, we named our folders using all lowercase. In 2.0, your folder should now, the first letter, start with a capital letter. So here is our folder, Users. It should be renamed to have a capital U for Users. And that will fix that error. So if we refresh, you can see we're getting our views. It's finding them. Um, but now we're also getting uh, PHP errors and notices on our page saying undefined variables. Uh, in this case, it's saying undefined variable HTML. It can't call this link method on a non-object. The reason for this, we'll find out, is inside of our index view. Here in 1.2 and in 1.3, we were able to call our helper methods using this uh, style of notation here, where we just called HTML helper and its link method. Uh, in 1.3, they made a change, and now in 2.0, it is now required. You have to call your helper methods using this, and then the name of the helper. In this case, it's HTML. 
and the first letter needs to be capitalized, so the H in HTML needs to be capitalized, and then the method that you want to use. So we're calling this HTML and its link method. And this is the notation that you need to use for all of your helpers now. So I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to make those changes here to the rest of these links. Like so. And then the last link down here. We'll save it, go back to the browser, refresh the index page, and you can see it's working again. Uh, we're getting a flash message here because I tried to access a user that wasn't there on accident. There we go. Um, we do have another change we need to make inside of our index page. As you can see, we are creating a link to delete a user. It's linking to our delete action. And when you do this using the HTML link helper method, it's going to do a get request to do this delete. Um, you should actually be doing a post request. And Cake 2.0 has offered a solution for that. So instead of using the HTML link method, we're going to use the form helper, and we're going to use its post link method. Uh, notice that the L is capitalized, so it's post, and then the L is capitalized for link. And this will allow us to link to our delete action and do a post request instead. Uh, it works pretty much the same. The first argument to the post link method is again the linked text. The second argument is an array of where you want to link to. In this case we're linking to our delete action and we're passing in the ID of the user that we want to delete. And then what has changed for the post link method is that rather than passing in the JavaScript confirmation message as the fourth parameter, you now actually pass in an array as the third parameter. And you can pass in key value pairs. In this case, we're going to set a confirm key. This is the JavaScript confirmation pop-up. And the value is what you want it to say. So we can say, are you sure you want to delete that user? And save it. So we've changed this to instead of using the HTML link method to use the form post link method to make sure when we link to the delete action it does a post request rather than a get request. So let's make sure we didn't break anything and we'll click delete and we're still getting the message so I believe the link is working correctly. We'll test it out uh, later on in the video after I make some more changes. So I'm just going to click cancel for now. So the index page is working. Let's look at the view page. Here we're getting the same error, undefined variable HTML. So that means we need to go change this helper. So we'll switch back to our browser, I mean our text editor, and we'll open up the view view. And here's all of our HTML link helpers using the old notation. So I'm going to change it to this HTML link. Then I'll copy it and I'll paste it in here and here and the last link. And we also have another delete link here. So I'm going to change this to use the form helper and use its post link method. And then I will replace the third and fourth parameters with an array. And we'll set the confirm key for the JavaScript pop-up to say, are you sure you want to delete that user? and we'll save it, make sure I didn't mess anything up. Alright, let's go to the browser and test out this view page again. And it looks like it's working. Let's click the delete link and that appears to be working. Again, we'll test out the delete later in the video after some more changes have been made. So let's look at our new user page. This is our users add page. And here we're getting another error. Uh, it's the same type of error, just a different variable. It's the form variable can't call the create method. So let's take a look. I'm going to close out these views and open up the add view. And here we're calling the form helpers create method as well as the input and end methods. So we need to change this to use the new notation for calling our helpers. So we'll call this capital F for form and then the create method. Uh, I've noticed some new PHP users are putting in a second dollar sign right before the helper. 
So they're having a dollar sign before this and a dollar sign before the name of the helper. This is incorrect. You only have one dollar sign and it comes before this. So let's make this change to the rest of these helpers. So we'll change the three inputs here to use this form as well as the end method and we have an HTML link down here that we'll change to use this HTML link and let's check it out and see if it works there we go and then we have one more page we have our edit page and here we're getting the same error undefined form variable can't call the create method so let's edit the edit page and here's the form helper let's change it to use this capital F for form and then I'll copy it and make the same changes to the input methods down here and the end method and the HTML helper for the link. Uh, I see a typo here as well, so I'm going to fix that real quick. All right, so it looks good. Let's make sure it works. We'll refresh the edit page, and there we go. All right, so we fixed up all of the views. Uh, those are the most common errors that you're going to run into. Uh, that's the naming of the view folder and then calling of your helper methods. So I'm going to move on to a few other name changes in 2.0 that don't actually cause errors, but you might want to switch to these new naming conventions. Uh, in our controller folder, here's our users underscore controller dot PHP file. In 1.3, uh, we used this convention of using the name of the table, which is users, and then appending an underscore controller to the file name. Uh, this does still work in 2.0 but instead we should use Pascal case or upper camel case, however you like to call it. So it should be a capital U for users and then a capital C for controller.php. No underscore, so it's users controller.php. And same for our model. Uh, in 1.3 it was all lowercase user, that's the singular version of our users table. Uh, in 2.0 we should have a the first letter should be capital using camel case, upper camel case or pascal case so it should be user.php and then we have our app controller down here in 1.3 the app controller was outside of the controller folder it was it was stored inside of the app folder I don't know why this was um, but that's how they did it in 2.0 they've moved the app controller inside of the controller folder so we're going to do that here actually going to open up the full uh, the file going to select all of that cut it out and then I'm just going to delete this file and I'll create a new one up here so that we can use the new naming so it's going to be a capital A for app and a capital C for controller .php. and then I'll paste it in so we've moved the app controller into the controller folder so Next, let's look at what we can change inside of our classes. Uh, in the model folder, I'm going to open up my user model. And in my videos, we used PHP4 to declare our class properties. Since we're now using PHP5, we should change this. And we will use the public visibility keyword instead of var, which was PHP4. So that changes that and you also do not have to specify or declare the name property if you don't want to uh, cake php can inflect it and you don't have to use it um, but if you want to you can save cake php some processing power and declare it here so i'm going to leave it there so we'll close the user model and let's take a look at our users controller in here we can make those same changes uh, we'll change the name property to use public instead and we can also add public to our methods or our actions since they are public actions so I'm going to paste public in front of each one of these and save the file and now let's look at what we can use uh, new in cake PHP 2 inside of our actions uh, nothing has changed for the index action, so it's going to remain the same. 
for the view action, there's a couple things we can change. The first one isn't actually specific to Cake 2. Uh, you could do this in Cake 1.3. If you notice down here, we're calling the user models read method, and we're passing in the ID of the user. This way we can retrieve a single user whose ID matches the passed in ID. Uh, we can actually set the user ID at the top up here and set it equal to the ID that's passed into the action. And then when we call the read method, we don't have to pass in any parameters to it. We can just call the read method with zero arguments and it will try and find a user with this matching ID. For Cake 2.0, we can check if a user actually exists. So we can check if this user with an ID exists. So we can say if this user, and our user model now has this exists method. And of course that's going to return true or false if there is a user with this ID. Uh, in this case, we want to check if the user does not exist, so I'm adding the exclamation point there. And for Cake 2.0, we can now throw exceptions. So we can throw a new exception. Uh, there's a bunch of different exceptions you can throw. In this case, we're going to throw a not found exception. And you can also put in an error here if you want, like invalid user, and save it. So if there's no user with this ID, we'll throw this exception. So let's test it out and make sure our view page still works properly. So we'll switch back to our browser, click on view, and it's still retrieving the user properly. If we try to add, uh, try to enter in a URL, like a, an ID that does not exist, for instance 12, you can see we're getting the error here. So it looks like our new action is working. Next, let's work on the add action. This is used to add a new user into the database. Uh, there's a couple different changes we can make here. Instead of checking if this data is not empty, instead we can actually check what type of request it is. So we can check if this request is post. Anytime the form is submitted, it's going to do a post request. So if it is a post request, that means the form has been submitted and will save the user into the database. Uh, another change that was made is this data. Remember, this data is used to retrieve the values that were submitted from your forms. Uh, it has changed its name slightly. It's now called this request data, and it works exactly the same. Uh, this contains the values submitted from your form. And, for instance, if you wanted, you could just retrieve a single form field value. So if you wanted to just get the value from the name field, you could do it like that. Um, in this case, we're passing in the whole data array so we can save the entire user into the database. So there's the changes to the add action. Let's test it out to make sure it works. So we'll go back to our index page. We'll click on new user. This is our add action or add view. Let's try adding a new user. So we'll put in George Doe, and George Doe, George at Doe.com. And the user has been saved. And here's the user. So let's move on to the edit action. Remember, the edit action is used to edit an individual user. Uh, this action is going to use a combination of both the changes that we made in the view action and the add action. So we're passing in the ID of the user that we want to edit, and we're using the read method down here to read in that user, to retrieve that user's information, and then we pre-populate the form. So we can instead set the user ID up here, and then we can check if that user if the user does not exist, so we'll use the models exists method. And if that user does not exist, we will throw a not found exception. And again, we'll just say invalid user. And instead of checking if this data is not empty, we can use the is method. So we can check if this request is a post. And when you're doing an edit or an update, you should also check uh, using the OR operator here the if the request is a put. Oops. So if the request is a post or if the request is a put, we'll save that user into the database. And remember, this data has changed, so it's this request data. And down here, we're doing another if 
we're checking if this data is empty, this is where we pre-populate the form with the user that we want to edit. Uh, we don't actually need to do a completely separate if, we can just do an else off of the if up here. So if the request is a post or a put, we're going to save the user. Otherwise it's not, which means it should be a get, and then we can just pre-populate the form. So I'm going to change this to be else instead. And of course we need to change this data to be this request data. And since we set the ID up top here, remember we can just call the read method with zero arguments and it will work as expected. So there's the changes to the edit action. Let's see if it works. Let's try editing George Doe. I'll remove his last name and submit and the user has been saved and you can see it saved the changes. So that's working. And lastly we have our delete action. Uh, if you remember we'll take a look one more time at our view. So under view users open up index we created this form helper using the post link to link to our delete action. Uh, this forces it to use a post request rather than a get request. So what we want to do is check if the request is get. If it is a get, we're going to throw an exception. So we'll throw a new uh, method not allowed exception. That way we can ensure that it's coming in as a post request like it should, and then we'll just handle it the regular way. Uh, if there's no ID, we give them a, a message and redirect. If the deletion was successful, we give them a success message and redirect. Uh, if none of these cases were met, we say the user was not deleted, and then we redirect the user. So let's make sure deleting works. We'll switch back to our browser. I'm going to refresh the page here, and let's delete George. Are you sure you want to delete that user? Click OK, and the user has been deleted. So there's the changes that have affected my blog tutorial videos. I hope they help you troubleshoot on your applications or working through my tutorials. Uh, there's a lot of new changes in Cake 2.0. I've only showed you a few of them. Uh, again, you don't have to do these exception throwing if you don't want to. This is optional. Uh, but I think it's pretty cool that we can now throw exceptions and we have a bunch of new cool methods to use. So thank you for watching.